Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and in this video we're taking back the streets, or the freeways anyway. We're kicking car culture to the curb and requisitioning freeways for high-speed rail as we please. We'll start this series off in one of the most passenger rail friendly states, Texas. Target, Interstate 35 from San Antonio to Fort Worth. We're coming for your freeways, Texas. San Antonio, Texas, metro population 2.6 million, home of the Alamo, let's go. We're starting in the northbound lanes of Interstate 35 on the north end of downtown at the new San Antonio High Speed Rail Station. You heard right, we're not taking right of way leftovers, we're taking lanes. I'm not worrying about on ramps, off ramps, or transition ramps, the road people can worry about those things. We're laying claim to what we need to take back the streets. The station wouldn't be in the heart of downtown, but there is plenty of potential for redevelopment between the San Antonio Riverwalk area and the station site. Right out of the gate, we have some slower speed curves thanks to interaction with yet another freeway. Fun fact, San Antonio has eight arterial freeway branches emanating from its core freeway ring, as well as another complete outer freeway ring and a half circle outer suburban freeway ring. Very impressive. We're now on the fast track out of town. This portion of Interstate 35 is 135 miles per hour capable with a tilting train. Traffic volume on Interstate 35 between San Antonio and Austin is as high as 220,000 vehicles a day, with traffic volume increasing toward Austin. Stretched out evenly over a day, that would be two and a half vehicles every second. Approaching from Austin is another train capable of carrying hundreds of passengers using clean energy just like the one we're following. We're now approaching San Antonio's main outer ring road, which signals that we're ready to say goodbye to San Antonio proper. Interstate 35 would generally be in the 110 to 125 mile per hour range out of San Antonio, with the exception of this curve in New Braunfels, which is closer to 90 miles per hour. However, speed would immediately pick back up to 135 miles per hour thanks to some generous curves provided by Texas Department of Transportation. This is heading towards San Marcos, 16 miles further down the road. On the way to San Marcos and Texas State University, we'd have a chance to cruise at top speed for about 8 miles. Although to do it, we have to avoid the temptation to stop at the gigantic outlet mall they have out here. San Marcos is a fairly typical college town of about 70,000 people, which is roughly halfway between San Antonio and Austin. Texas State has a student population of 39,000. A train from either direction would be coming into this station hot. Our station intersects a Union Pacific subdivision for potential local transit access. The station is near mixed-use development and within a half mile of the university. There are plenty of enormous parking lots nearby to develop, including one attached to a Walmart. Since we're stopping, let's look at travel time. These 50 miles between our San Antonio and San Marcos stations would take about 24 minutes at an average of 123 miles per hour. Now it's time to hit the road again for our next stop in Austin. The interstate geometry between San Marcos and Austin is very fast, facilitating the full 186 mile per hour speed of an Alstom Avelia tilting train for nearly 25 miles. Here we see one potential issue with merely replacing roads with high-speed rail, rate of change in elevation. Higher rates are okay for cars, but for a high-speed train, it becomes a roller coaster ride. Speaking of roller coasters, probably taking that turn too fast, whoa! Now pulling into downtown Austin with a real nice view of the city. Austin is the center of a metro with about 2.4 million people, famous for its music scene and home to the University of Texas Longhorns with 52,000 students. Combined with San Antonio, Austin forms a mega region. I have a station near the convention center which intersects Austin's light rail red line for transit convenience. As we prepare to stop, let's check travel times. 
San Marcos to Austin, red hot at 12 minutes to cover these 29 miles at an average speed of 155 miles per hour. San Antonio to Austin, 38 minutes with a stop in San Marcos for an average of 124 miles per hour, including stops. Let's continue northward out of Austin proper and through its extensive suburbs, mostly 110 to 125 miles per hour through the burbs, occasionally slowing to 90. There is, however, a stretch of about 15 miles back up at full cruising speed near the rapidly suburbanizing town of Jarrell, before hitting some slower curves into the Killeen Temple Metro, where we'll make a stop in Belton. Not an obvious stop, but Killeen, 15 miles west, is home to Fort Cavazos, an enormous army installation. The Killeen Temple Metro also has a population of about half a million that is growing rapidly. You can see the place is very suburban and a station would need a transit hub in order to service the area. I have the station across from a Schlotzky's and a Whataburger. We're going to demolish the Pizza Hut, Burger King, Starbucks, and Jimmy John's to make way for the transit center. The local residents will surely thank us. You can see there is some development potential here and Belton's quaint downtown is close by. We're 60 miles out from downtown Austin. I have a trip between the two at 27 minutes and an average of 137 miles per hour. San Antonio to Belton travel time, one hour, seven minutes for an average of 124 miles per hour, including stops. We're relatively slow out of the Belton station to the north through Temple and then things pick up again. Next stop is Waco, home of Baylor University. The route to Waco is also top speed in parts. Not many tempting stops on the way, although there is a Cabela's out by State Route 6 that isn't far from a Top Golf. The main deterrent to high speed coming into Waco is rate of change in elevation with some of these overpasses. Waco is another college town. Baylor University is to the right of the freeway in this direction. Downtown is to the left. Texas State Technical is out at the horizon. Waco has an extensive downtown area half a mile from Interstate 35, which is quite walkable in places. Unfortunately, it is also riddled with small underutilized surface parking lots. This does afford plenty of room to grow, which is good because Waco has been and continues to grow at a 10% per decade clip. The Waco metro population is 300,000. Baylor has an enrollment of 21,000. TSTC's student body numbers 10,000. Our station is across the street from an In-N-Out burger. What would Whataburger say? The station is also directly adjacent to Baylor University. Since we're stopped, let's talk travel times. It is 41 miles from Whataburger in Belton to In-N-Out in Waco. Our Taking Back the Streets train would cover that in 18 minutes at an average of 136 miles per hour. That brings the 180 mile San Antonio to Waco total to one hour, 27 minutes and an average of 124 miles per hour, including stops. We bid Baylor and Waco adieu, crossing the Brazos River and striking out for North Texas and Fort Worth at 110 miles per hour until reaching open country. Once in open country, things are pretty fast, reaching 186 miles per hour once more, like here in West Texas. Not West Texas, although I guess this technically is West Texas, but West, comma, Texas. The town is called West. It wouldn't be a problem here if they were still building the freeway. Just makes it easier to requisition for our purposes. A little north of Hillsboro, Interstate 35 splits into an east and west branch. The west branch curves tightly through the intersection on the way to Fort Worth. This keeps things below 75 miles per hour here. The east branch connection to Dallas is quicker at 110 miles per hour. We'll head up to Fort Worth and come back to revisit the Dallas branch later. North of the split, Interstate 35 has a sizable median, but we'll stick with the northbound lanes. 
vehicle traffic can have the median. Our train takes priority here. Once again, following a similar pattern, Interstate 35 is a little rough in the metros, but quite fast between. We have some curves in the Alvarado area, but can take those at 135 miles per hour. What are they putting in the water down there that is causing highway engineers to design one and a quarter mile radius curves all over the place? Usually it's closer to half a mile. Finally, we enter the city of Fort Worth. Fort Worth has a population of 950,000 and is part of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. The Metroplex has a population of 7.6 million and is the fourth largest in the country behind New York, LA, and Chicago. We're going to do something a little different here and go underground where Interstate 35 West meets Interstate 30. That way we can hook up with the Dallas-Fort Worth High Speed Transportation Project under Fort Worth Central Station. Now that we're in the station, it's travel time time. This hypothetical freeway train would cover the 88 miles between Waco and Fort Worth in 39 minutes for an average of 136 miles per hour. That brings the grand total for our San Antonio to Fort Worth train to two hours, eight minutes to cover the 268 miles at an average of 125 miles per hour including stops. With a Y to DFW HST, that would get you from San Antonio to Dallas in about two and a half hours, rendering the Interstate 35 East leg somewhat redundant, but we'll look at it anyway. Back at the Interstate 35 three-way split north of Hillsboro, and this time we'll take a right at the fork. Insert Robert Frost reference. On the way to Dallas, we'll pass through the city of Waxahachie, at about 125 miles per hour. No stop here, I just like saying Waxahachie. A little farther north, we'll pass through the wonderfully symmetric intersection of Interstates 35 East and 20. Slowing significantly into the core of Dallas with a 60 mile per hour curve near the Dallas Zoo, it will stay slow the last few miles into the Dallas Central Railroad Station site thanks to more slower speed freeway curves and an elevated S-curve over the Trinity River necessary to transition from the freeway to the station. Beyond the improbability of tearing out freeway lanes and replacing them with double-tracked high-speed rail, this Interstate 35 East route is also highly improbable if Texas Central DFW, HST, and an Interstate 35 East route are all built. Anyway, we've made it to Dallas. Let's look at how long it took. I have this 94 mile Waco to Dallas run at 46 minutes for an average of 122 miles per hour. That would net a total of two hours, 15 minutes to traverse the 275 miles between San Antonio and Dallas at an average of 122 miles per hour, including stops. I hope you enjoyed this taking back the streets video, looking at a concept often thrown around in speculative transit circles, but rarely investigated. What do you think of this type of idea? Did looking at it more closely give you any insight or maybe change your mind a little? Do you have a suggestion for a two to 400 mile interstate route you'd like to see investigated this way? Let me know in the comments. More Taking Back the Streets videos to come. More Federal Railroad Administration High Speed Rail Corridor videos. More City Pair videos. And another Stu's News, this time on March 1st instead of the last Friday of February. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.